So, good day to everybody. Thank you for having me take part in our PPS NORLU um, postgraduate entitled Pinakbet, a meeting of specialties. So, for my allergy part, my topic is on itchy and scratchy, meet the experts, the burden of atopic dermatitis. So, let me start with a case. We have a six-month-old male infant with recurrent pruritic non-greasy erythematous papillovesicular rash with serous exudates on the scalp, cheeks, extensor surfaces of all extremities. The duration of symptoms was started to note at three months of age, which should occur on and off. And the severity is localized to widespread, which disturbs significantly the sleep and oral intake of this patient. So given this scenario, these are the different differential diagnoses we can think of. And obviously, we are dealing with an infantile atopic dermatitis. And we have in our uh, armamentarium uh, guidelines how to manage these ones, which we are doing properly, which begins with skin care, making use of mild soap and as needed emollient application. And we have lots in the market, and they're all very effective and efficacious. We also advise environmental control, the use of first-line topical steroids, and sometimes we spare to the patients uh, with the use of topical calcineurin inhibitors. We also ask the help of our friendly dermatologists with uh, their help on phototherapy, cyclosporine, methotrexate, the use of supportive wet traps, and vitamin D. So this is how bad our patients would come to our clinic during their times of needs. And when we manage them properly, their skin gets better and would look like this. And they would leave the clinic very happily. But sometimes, and most of the time, we get them back again. And so we go now to the meat of the matter, atopic dermatitis. And we know that it is the, one of the most common chronic conditions with an estimated global prevalence of nearly 230 million. And in the U.S. alone, there are 30 million sufferers of atopic dermatitis, 10.7% of which are children and 7.2% are adults. And for the epidemiology, we have the Isaac study, which was an old study and uh, always being updated, showing the global prevalence of around 8% in 6 to 7 years old of age, 7.3% among 13 to 14 years of age, and 15% would have severe atopic dermatitis. And in the Asia-Pacific prevalence, around 10% in 6 to 7 years of age, 5.3% in 13 to 14 years of age, and 12% would have severe atopic dermatitis. And this is where these patients are distributed worldwide. In our local setting, we have this data coming from the Philippine Derma Society Health Information System showing to us that atopic dermatitis really ranks among the top 10 uh, causes of consultation for skin. So the rank is anywhere from top 3 up to top 6. And at the moment, it went down to top 8 in 2018. And at the moment, it's, 20, it's uh, number 6. So it really poses a public health burden. It has a significant public health burden in terms of its high prevalence, as we have shown, significant morbidity associated, the healthcare utilization, the cost of care, financial, psychological, social burden, as well as the presence of systemic comorbidities. The financial burden, we know, can be direct in terms of the prescription meds that we give, the healthcare visits that they have to pay, hospitalization when needed, and of course, the cost of transportation, especially this very difficult times. And indirectly, these are the causes of financial burden for these patients and their families. So in U.S., they have this um, amount of money spent in treating patients with atopic dermatitis. And in our Asia-Pacific region, we have the annual direct cost, and this was... Um, seen in Thailand and in South Korea. 
which is also showing to us that it's a very expensive disease. So it also uh, was shown to have academic and occupational burden. So in children, atopic dermatitis would affect their school life. They are said to be having presenteeism. In adults, it affects their career progression. So they're, being, uh, they're having atopic dermatitis is a risk factor for occupational disease. So they avoid jobs involved in healthcare, food preparation, cleaning, hairdressing, and auto repair for obvious reasons. For social burden, it poses a negative effect in their interpersonal relationship. And there are studies really showing stigmatization from peers, social isolation at a very young age because of bullying and being teased on. And of course, 36% of AD sufferers' uh, self-confidence are affected. And more importantly, it poses a significant impact on the family quality of life because of the following. So also significant are studies coming out that atopic dermatitis poses a burden in terms of neuropsychiatric conditions. So there is a positive association of atopic dermatitis with conduct problems, ADHD, emotional problems, having anxiety, depression, and even suicidal ideation. It is not yet established for the following conditions for autism. But for epilepsy in children, there is an increased risk in children with atopic dermatitis and allergic rhinitis, but this is not associated in adults. Likewise, in neuropsychiatric conditions, they've noted an increased systemic TH2 cytokine levels, which are linked to CNS disease, as well as HPA axis dysregulation, because this, as we know, stems from a chronic inflammation early, or early on in life and because of systemic exposure to corticosteroids. In these patients also, they've shown greater sympathetic excitability in response to stress. They have higher heart rate, lower vagal activity, higher anxiety, depression, and emotional excitability. AD would also put patients at risk to infection. So we have seen as pediatricians the myriad of, of uh, bacterial infections that these patients undergo when they have empetigo, staph aureus colonization, and even viral infections. So when these patients get viral infections, their AD is very difficult to control. More so when they suffer from systemic infections, we know that this causes severe flare-up of their atopic dermatitis. As for metabolic diseases, there are studies also coming out that Atopic dermatitis would affect these conditions also in adults, such as those with cardiovascular diseases and even your type 2 uh, DM, and it may be related to the corticosteroid use. So in children, obesity is one which is associated with greater atopic dermatitis severity. And uh, thank God that it's not yet established for MI as well as the presence of stroke. For metabolic diseases and atopic dermatitis, there is a genetic linkage. There is what we call circulating uh, cytokines, which put them at systemic inflammation states. And uh, what contributes to this more is lifestyle factors, which are modifiable. These are your sedentary lifestyle, smoking, drinking, and having not enough sleep. And take note that CBD risk factors are lower for atopic dermatitis compared with psoriasis. However, take note also that atopic dermatitis and psoriasis are both inflammatory skin conditions. For obesity, we know that this is caused by genetics, by altered gut microbiome, by sedentary lifestyle, by poor diet, impaired quality of life, and chronic inflammation. But these patients also have reduced epidermal barrier function, hence uh, because of increased sweating and increased blood pressure, and therefore they are put at risk if they have atopic dermatitis. For autoimmune diseases, again, this is one interesting study, or area of study that is coming out, wherein atopic dermatitis increases alopecia areata risk, especially if the atopic dermatitis is of the severe form, and especially if um, the pathogenesis involves a filagrin gene mutation. So your alopecia areata increase your atopic dermatitis risk, uh, greatest for the early onset alopecia areata. And so with inflammatory bowel disease, and these are identified by 39 shared genetic risk loci, and this would involve your Crohn's disease, your ulcerative colitis, and celiac disease. 
So for malignancy, atopic dermatitis appears to be protective for malignancy. And the reason is that they have an activated immune system from the start, which would enhance immune surveillance. However, there is a slight increase in lymphoma risk. So atopic dermatitis severity is a risk factor, especially in adults. So when we see adults with atopic dermatitis, we have to rule out the presence of uh, lymphoma as a risk factor, specifically your T-cell non-Hodgkin's lymphoma. For skin cancers at the moment, it still is inconsistent. So for take-home points, atopic dermatitis prevalence continues to increase. This is associated with significant impact on public health, economy, academics, occupation, social relations, and family life. This is related to comorbidities, infections, such as your malignancies, neuropsychiatric, metabolic, and autoimmune disorders. So now we take a, take a look at the role of oxidative stress in the pathogenesis of atopic dermatitis. So atopic dermatitis remains to be a very challenging skin disease. It is hard to understand and much more to manage. And we have seen this through the years. No, Not one would say that this atopic dermatitis patient is cured. And much of what we know revolves around the interplay of this trinity of etiologic factors. First is the presence of dysfunctional immune response. Second is a dysfunctional epidermal barrier and a chronic intractable uh, itch. So atopic dermatitis researchers have addressed, uh, have observed the role of oxidative stress in the pathogenesis of atopic dermatitis. So what is this oxidative stress? So we define it as the formation of oxidants in the cells of the human body that exceeds the normal antioxidant defense mechanism of the body to remove them. And because of this, it leads to the accumulation of a reactive oxygen species or your ROS and other free radicals. These excess oxidants reacts with other cellular macromolecules, including the cells lipids, nucleic acids, and proteins. And this would cause a chain of reaction, which eventually results in tissue inflammation, in injury, and finally cell death. So atopic dermatitis is a very challenging skin disease. It is hard to understand and much more to manage as we have seen. And the skin is the one that is being affected, being the largest organ of the body. We know that it protects the body from external insults, such as your chemicals, environmental pollutants, and allergens. The skin becomes a major target of oxidative stress due to reactive oxygen that is continuously being generated by your keratinocytes as a response to these external stimuli. On the other hand, we have endogenous free radicals which are also being generated during normal metabolism as an integral part of normal skin function. And this would cause little harm because the intracellular defense mechanism of the body is capable of reducing their damaging effects. However, when there is increased or prolonged free radical uh, formation or action, this can overwhelm the antioxidant defense mechanism of the skin and contribute now to the development of skin conditions, as you can see in your screen, such as contact dermatitis, your alopecia areata, your atopic dermatitis, seb dermatitis, your scleroderma, pemphigus, vitiligo, acne, rosacea, your skin cancers, even photoaging, and of course, psoriasis. So biological antioxidant defense mechanisms are present in our cells. We have both enzymatic systems like your superoxide, dismutase, and glutathione peroxidase, and non-enzymatic systems like your vitamin A, C, E, glutathione, and coenzyme Q10. But on the other hand, your ROS or your reactive oxygen species and nitrogen species are being produced by cells during normal metabolism. So when there is excessive free radical release coming from external stimuli and inflammation, the defense mechanism of the body becomes overridden. Since, so we have the term system override and oxidative stress ensues. So oxidative metabolites have been detected in the urine and serum of patients suffering from atopic dermatitis. The oxidative stress can then directly damage the skin and therefore upregulates the production of more pro-inflammatory cytokines that would eventually create a dysfunctional epidermal barrier and more free radicals creating now your vicious cycle. 
So given the association of oxidative stress in the development of atopic dermatitis, it is worthwhile to consider incorporating strategies in oxidative stress in AD management. And this can be accomplished in multiple ways. First is by avoiding environmental, physical, and psychological triggers to achieve prolonged remission. So these are your behavioral modific modification. Number two is by applying emollients to maintain intact skin barrier. Number three is by reducing free radical production and enhancing antioxidant capacity by using your antioxidants. Number four, by reducing the intensity of inflammation and pro-inflammatory cytokine production with the use of anti-inflammatory agents. And fifth is by reducing immune response to triggers of AD by using immunomodulatory drugs. The practical approach is to combine all of the following. So now, the next few slides will show several articles which recognizes the significant role of oxidative stress in the pathogenesis of atopic dermatitis. This redox report on free radical research recognizes the role of oxidative stress in numerous cutaneous conditions and the use of antioxidant strategies as an effective method in the improvement of these skin conditions. This review further emphasizes oxidative stress to play a central role in the etiopathogenesis by causing direct damage to cellular structures of the skin, hastening dermal inflammation, weakening skin barrier function, and enabling entry of microbial pathogens and further release of free radicals, which further contributed to the oxidative stress. This article shows that for the past 28 years, in vivo studies on oxidative stress have been around. It is only now that it has been given much attention, making oxidative stress as a target for treating symptoms of atopic dermatitis. And this article shows the evolution of emollients from first generation to a more sophisticated uh, emollients, which brings us to the concept of adding an antioxidant to a moisturizer to help alleviate the symptoms of atopic dermatitis. So this article also emphasized the concept of adding an antioxidant to a moisturizer as a new treatment to modality for managing oxidative stress and improving barrier function in atopic dermatitis. So in this paper, they highlighted the role of new generation moisturizers infused with antioxidants as a key ingredient in the management of atopic dermatitis among Asians. So how does it work? The antioxidant formulation is said to donate electrons to stabilize the free radicals. So considering the role of antioxidants in atopic dermatitis, products enriched with antioxidants can be a valid aid in treating the symptoms of AD and other skin disorders or even be a valuable alternative to topical corticosteroids as they reduce inflammation and restore skin barrier. So in combination with other topicals and systemic agents, this formulation can result in faster recovery and prolonged remission time for these patients, which is what we really dream for these patients. So Professor Adelaide Herbert further elucidated the role of antioxidants, particularly for feril palmitate in the treatment of mild moderate AD. And this is published in the International Journal of Women's Dermatology. So she further highlighted that oxidative stress play a central role in the arena of etiopathogenesis of atopic dermatitis and added on to the direct damage of free radicals that have on epidermal keratinocyte cell membranes, organelles, DNA, leading to a dysfunctional skin barrier, which we see in patients with atopic dermatitis. So in the same paper, she concluded that antioxidant emollients were found to be effective and safe option for the management of AD and encourage well-constructed strong clinical studies to further show definitive effects of these agents in the production and treatment of your atopic dermatitis exacerbations. So now, how do we position the now antioxidant-containing emollients in the treatment of atopic dermatitis? 
So it is well known that emollients have been a cornerstone of treatment for atopic dermatitis. The American Academy of Dermatology would strongly recommend the use of moisturizers in the management and treatment of atopic dermatitis. And you can see here the strength of recommendation and the level of evidence. And also for us in our country and in this part of Asia. The European Task Force on Atopic Dermatitis likewise recommends emollients as the mainstay of treatment for mild, moderate, and severe AD in both the adults and pediatric population. So which brings us now to a new class of topical agents known as PEDs, or prescription emollient devices, which specifically target skin barrier defects in atopic dermatitis. They are different from the over-the-counter emollients because they contain not only emollients and humectants, but also anti-inflammatory agents and antioxidants. So they're approved as medical devices based on the assertion that they serve a structural role on the skin barrier function without causing any chemical action. They can act as an intermediate treatment be between emollients and topical corticosteroids and enhance efficacy of upstream treatment without incurring higher risk associated with downstream treatment options. So the antioxidant in this prescription emollient device is your furfuryl palmitate. This is the chemical structure of furfuryl palmitate. It is an ester obtained when furfuryl alcohol reacts with palmitic acid. It is lipophilic and therefore it is highly permeable through biological membranes and it has a high free quality quenching property just like Pac-Man. So in this study, there were 17 children with atopic dermatitis, 3 to 11 years of age, and furfuryl palmitate containing emollient was shown to reduce the intensity of blisters, erythema, dryness, desquamation, and itching. And this helped ameliorate symptoms of children with atopic dermatitis. And in this study, 20 adults with mild to moderate atopic dermatitis were assessed to have been cured or improved at day 21 with furfuryl palmitate containing emollient as compared with placebo, demonstrating the potential benefit of symptoms amelioration in adult patients as well. So in this study, furfuryl palmitate is also seen to be efficacious in reducing symptoms associated with allergic contact dermatitis. And 85% of investigators thought that the efficacy and tolerability of the product was good or excellent. So when tested, against topical corticosteroids, furfuryl palmitate showed efficacy approaching that of corticosteroids in the management of symptoms of patients with atopic dermatitis. So these are five published studies of furfuryl palmitate in topical formulation that have shown that it reduces the signs and symptoms associated with atopic dermatitis with no adverse reactions. So even Asian guidelines would recognize the use of moisturizers that contain antioxidants such as your furfuryl palmitate as a promising therapy for improving the symptoms associated with atopic dermatitis. So in summary, when one has an impaired skin barrier, entry of pathogens, allergens, and irritants cannot be avoided. This will then trigger the response leading to the release of pro-inflammatory cytokines, leading to inflammation and activation of inflammatory cells releasing free radicals. The, oxidative, the excessive reactive oxygen species then create a state of oxidative stress, which further disrupts the skin barrier and produces further inflammation. The barrier repair cream, Relizema, has dual properties. It is an emollient and a potent antioxidant. As an emollient, it addresses the impaired skin barrier, thus restoring barrier function, which in turn decreases the penetration of antigens, allergens, and irritants to the skin. It is also a potent antioxidant, which decreases the oxidative stress state of the skin, therefore promoting barrier repair and decreasing inflammation. So let me share with you the Relisima study done by Professor Giovanni Pellacchini entitled The Efficacy and Safety of a Medical Device for Topical Use with Adults with Atopic Dermatitis. 
So as a background, because of the burden of symptoms of atopic and contact dermatitis that brings to our patients, not to mention how negatively it affects their quality of life, a medical device for topical use was developed to create physical barrier which separates the skin from surrounding environment, creating a suitable environment for the maintenance and recovery of the physiologic skin barrier. The aim of the study is to determine the clinical efficacy of Relizima cream for use in adults with mild to moderate uh, dermatosis. The subjects were aged 18 to 65 with mild to moderate atopic dermatitis or contact dermatitis. It is an open label study. The cream applied twice a day affecting uh, on the affected areas for 28 days. And the objective scores were done to evaluate them, making use of the IgA and EASI scores and self-assess pruritus quality of life and, and satisfaction of the product as well. And you can see here, the subject characteristic shows female predominance, young adults with a mean age of 35, IgA scores of 2.28, which is expected since we are testing mild to moderate disease, the EASI score of 4.49, which is a bit low, with, but attributed to the presence of localized lesions in this patient in some patients and the high DLQI score, which depicts a poor quality of life in these patients. So these are the results. So among these 40 patients uh, with the mean age of 35 years, treatment success has defined as a reduction of your IgA scores. Two more than one from baseline was achieved in around 87.5 of subjects after 28 days of treatment. The mean IgA and EASI scores were decreased at days 14 and 28, and subjects reported a reduction in pruritus severity and improved quality of life. Most subjects were satisfied with the product characteristic and, uh, and with the ease of use. And in the end of the study, the skin condition was improved in more than 90% of subjects, as reported by the investigators and the subject self-assessment. And more importantly, there were no safety issues identified as only one AE was observed, which is not even related to uh, the cream, of, cream on study. So this graph shows continuous decrease in severity from first clinic up to the end of the study. Immediate and gradual reduction in eczema symptoms and signs also were noted from day one of uh, visit. The subjects reported a rapid decrease in pruritus with correlated improvement in their quality of life. And these are the pictures as shown by this patient on the beginning of treatment and at the end of the 28 day treatment. Again, involving their palms. So these are mostly contact dermatitis and atopic dermatitis for some at the back of their legs and at the end of the treatment. And you can see here really a very good improvement. And for myself, I have included for our purposes, one of my more difficult patients. I have a preteen. She's 11 years of age, coming from a highly atopic family. And she has been suffering from atopic dermatitis since she was an infant. And then uh, she has very good skin compliance, uh, makes use of good soap and emollients. And despite of this, uh, the atopic dermatitis is hardly ever controlled. And this is how she looks like now. And most of her lesions she complains are in these areas that are problematic, her neck, her face, you can see here, her antecubitals and the front of her thighs. And being 11 years old, she's very self-conscious. And this was as a start of treatment with Relizima. And at day seven, you can see here somewhat a significant improvement because the skin is shining literally, you know, even without touching the skin, you can see that it's shinier. It depicts a uh, softer skin. You can see here the um, significant decrease of rashes on the antecubital areas and even at the back of her knees. And then at the end of treatment, as if nothing bad happened to her skin. So she continues to use Relizima cream as up at the moment. Uh, I also have very good response with infants. With infants, I have, I have. Um, used Relizima cream in very young infants. So in conclusion, the medical device Relizima cream for topical use is safe and reduces the severity of symptoms in adults as well as children with atopic and contact dermatitis. And with this, thank you for your kind attention. Thank you so much.